So the, there are two kind of churches, the churches of God and the synagogue of Satan. If you read the book of Revelation, it talks about, I think Revelation chapter 3 verse 9, it talks about the synagogue of Satan. I stand to be corrected on the scripture, but I think it's Revelation chapter 3 verse 9. So there is a synagogue of Satan and there is a synagogue of God. So there is always a constant warfare. So when you see the church of Satan will tell you, no, we want peace. Let us all unite in love because we know they are the devil. They, they constantly want to preach about love. They are the devil. That does not mean that the church of God doesn't preach love. But you see them, they say, no, let us join. Let us just become one. Let us become one. Why are we fighting each other? Let's become one. We can't become one with them. Many of them are not of God. They are of the devil. So they just want to solidate us. They want us to become one so that we can uh, authenticate them. So the church of God, they keep, the church of God will keep warning you against false prophets. The church of God, any act, because any teaching, any doctrine that is introduced, like for example, the doctrine of the soap. You see someone selling soap. Before that thing went viral, they have been doing it a long time ago. And we have been speaking about it for years. In fact, in 2018, I exposed so many teaching about false prophets. So many that, are, that they, they wanted to kill me. It was carried by gossip milers. Well, I still have the video to this very moment. I was putting on a singlet. When I just I was speaking, so I spewed so many things about them. All right, so we've been exposing them. The reason why we expose them is that a, a genuine believer might be deceived by what he's seeing. So if a man of God starts selling soap, starts selling anointed water, starts selling something, uh, starts selling bottled water and saying it's anointed water, and why he's selling it and nobody's tackling that thing, nobody's challenging that teaching, a, another young minister will grow up and do it, and not knowing that that thing is doing a deception because he doesn't know better. Because there are so many men of God you thought, you believe that they are genuine, that are from the devil. Yes. So many men of God, some of the men of God you think are genuine, are from the devil. Some of them you think that these people are, must be genuine, are from the devil. How do you know someone that is false? You know by the spirit behind them. And you will not detect every false prophet. There are some false prophets that God will not tell you that they are false. God can show to someone else, but will not show you. It depends on the, because some of them have learned how to hide. And some people were are genuine. Then they became false. And so people were false and they became genuine. So the ones that became that were genuine that became false, it is hard to detect. Because you can, if you go back to track their record, you see that these guys were genuine. Then all of a sudden you see them, they are false. They are becoming false. And you think it's the new move of God, whereas they are becoming false. They have sold their soul to the devil. And there are people that were false. You know them as false. But over time they repented and they became genuine. And while you are watching them, you're wondering. You're wondering, ah, this guy, because you think, because you, you know them as false, so you think they will forever be false. No. There are some people that were false that will become genuine. They will repent and they will become genuine. And there are some people that are false from the beginning. They will be false to the very end. All right? So that's why discernment is important. That's why you don't speak against a man of God. You speak against the teachings of the man of God. If it is wrong, you bring scriptures. When you expose scriptures, he exposes those things, those evil. And there are some people that have been given that utterance to be able to stand publicly and call a particular man of God's name and say, this man is false. There are some people that have that kind of grace. You can find it in the scripture. Apostle Paul did it. Peter actually did it. So many persons, so many men, some men of God in the scriptures do that. And this is when God has revealed it to you and given the permission to be able to speak it out. So that, the, so that those, some people that are still growing will not be deceived. Because so many persons don't have discernment of the Spirit. There are few persons that have discernment of the Spirit. Some that, look at, among other gifts, we pray in tongues a lot. And everyone that prays in tongues should be able to interpret tongues. By the grace of God, I interpret tongues. When the Lord opens my understanding, I interpret tongues. But you see, the same way you receive the gift of, sorry, you see, the same way you receive the gift of tongues, is the same way you receive the gift of interpretation of tongues. Same way. But how is it that we are more concerned of speaking in tongues and less concerned of interpreting tongues? And that is the danger. That's where we should be scared of. So we receive the gift of prophecy and the gift of tongues and the gift of healings, the gift of faith. This is where we stop. Nobody dives into the gift of word of knowledge. Nobody dives more into the gift of word of wisdom. Nobody dives more into the gift of faith. Nobody dives more into the gift of uh, uh, um, discernment of the spirit. Some people don't even know how discernment of the spirit works. And yet, without the discernment of the Spirit, you can't be able to see deep into the spiritual realm. And it is discernment of the Spirit. It discerns spirits. It is a gift that enables us to know if a spirit, if a man is speaking by the Spirit of God. And I've said you before, a man teaching can seem right and yet is from the devil. And a man teaching can seem wrong and yet is from God. 
So there are two ways. Descend the spirit of the man and then descend the fruit he is producing. Check the pastors he's raising. Who are the people he's raising? Look at the people he's raising. From the people he's raising, you will know what that man is. So a, every man that is a genuine servant of God must, a, must work so hard to raise men. Because the commandment is to make disciples of yourself. The kingdom of the first prophet hardly raised men. They raised you, but they hardly, they hardly, because they are afraid of exposing you to what they are doing. But every genuine man of God is like an open book. There is nothing that they are hiding. Right? So, there is more to this that I just explained to you, so we could go deeper into that more.